The decline of the UK and why there's less opportunities now. When I first went to the Philippines, or just prior to 2007, you had Case Catalog in Worcester. They employed over 600 people. You had Worcester Porcelain. They employed hundreds of people. But also it had a lot of artisans because they do the arts and craft. They pay, a lot of it's hand-painted. The, the handles are done by hand. They're very skilled people. Impossible to replace because they're not people that you can train. Not because if obviously if you got rid of the people that passed those down for the last hundred years between different generations, now that they're gone, you can't get anybody in that can do it anymore. Um, you have the metal castings for things like the uh, BMW aluminium heads. You had the presses for the Eurofighter parts. You had Holden Hydrogen that produced the bumpers for BMW and Mini. You had each one of those companies that employed hundreds of people. Each. And they're all gone. They're all either downscaled or not there anymore. Case Catalog isn't there. Um, the bizarre thing is, home shopping's actually increased. So I'd have thought their market share, although it'd been getting attacked by Amazon or something, I would assume they're still making money, um, but they're gone. The high street had a lot more shops. And it's nothing to do with boom or bust. It had a lot more shops. It's now charity shops. It's now betting shops. It's now pawn shops. You got the odd Greggs. You got not a lot else. So where did they all go? Well, the first thing I want to say is the UK has not invested in training for a long, long time. But it also has lost something very important with the influx of immigration. All those places employ people. When I first left school, I could walk into the Broody Foods and Vamix and get a job literally within a couple of days. They make cakes. They're, they're a factory that produce cakes for the supermarkets. Well, they're, they're two factories back to back, different owners, uh, but they both produce cakes. Um, you could, the wages were crap, but you could have your first job, left school, could get a job there. Um, I went into college, but if I wanted a job, I could have got there. Why is this relevant? To do the good training courses, and I'm not talking about media studies, and I know I keep hammering media studies, it's because of the sheer volume of people doing these courses, it becomes a bit like everybody becoming a plumber and locksmith when the UK say it had a shortage and then they had a ridiculous amount of people doing that training um, to the point of saturation. Well, media studies and that is exactly like that. It just doesn't make sense. But they do not encourage people into engineering. They do not encourage people into the skills that the UK actually needs. Because the engineering... Um, when I did it, it was through Heenan's training. Heenan's training doesn't exist in Worcester anymore. It's gone. Um, I then went on to do my electronics 224 City and Guilds at another college within Worcester that has now been absorbed into Worcester Tech College. Um, does that same opportunity exist? The answer is no. Uh, because when I did it, I did them on these day release youth training schemes. And which meant I worked for the, I mean, the first training course I did on that was Electronics 224 was with a security and fire company. Um, I used to do the fire alarm systems and security alarm systems. And then the second one was for my sis Datala, where I used to build computers for the insurance industry. Those types of training. Although they took a couple of years each, you actually come out the other end with the ability to be an engineer. Um, that's an electronics engineer. I, I progressed onto electrical and um, HV, uh, HVAC, and other skills later on. But it was the stepping stones. And the same goes for these jobs that existed. You know, like I was saying, that makes that still there, but you know what? Very few people local work there anymore because most come in from Birmingham. 
Um, they bring them in by the minibus, they get cheap labour because they're getting all the Jamaicans, Indians, Pakistanis, etc. from Birmingham working in those opportunities. Um, it's basically robbed the local community of stepping stone education because what happens is with those jobs, you go there and then you can go to night school. You go there and you can work part-time in the evening and go to college during the day. So you can actually fund your own education into a course that's actually relevant. You could become a carpenter, you could become an electrician, you could become a mechanic, you could become any skill that is actually in demand. But what do you actually get funding for these days? Media studies. Media studies where they'll give you a loan from the taxpayer, obviously, the taxpayer guaranteed loans. Um, and you come out with a qualification you cannot use. There's not enough opportunity for it. As an engineer myself, I'm a, a manager and engineer, I can go into the UK and get a job within two weeks. And when I say two weeks, I mean I probably got ten opportunities in those two weeks and taking one of them. Here I am in Spain. I got two opportunities this week from companies in the UK wanting my skill set. One wants me for a year, another one wants me for doing some contracts for the rail networks. Um, but the point is, I already have the skills. When the UK started bringing in immigration for the Poles and everybody else and opening the EU to everybody, what's happened is all the stepping stone opportunities have gone where you would go and work for the local builder as a labourer for, for a year and a half and become a bricklayer, because you'll do, you'll do your, co your daily release co college. Um, now you find that somebody's taking that job from Eastern European because they're cheaper and they're already skilled. You find that the carpenter jobs are the same. You find, I know back in... That'd be 2006. That where I was at Millennium Point, that a lot of the contractors then were coming in from Lithuania, etc., and starting to take the contracts because they've gone from being the guy plastering or whatever to now owning their own little company because their mindset is a bit different. Now, I'm not anti immigration, but the problem is we've just robbed a generation of opportunities because we've taken all their jobs and given them to other people. Um, now, now, like I said, I don't blame immigration for it because I blame bad governments because I, a lot of the EU stuff was to do with reducing the cost of construction labour within London for the wealthy and then offsetting it by saying all oh, immigrant, all these immigrants are taking your jobs, but at the same time, the same people saying that are the ones that brought them in by the thousand anyway. Um, but the the problem we got now is how do you correct it? We've got a generation of people that can't see any opportunities, and there aren't any. They've been heavily reduced. Um, I can see some changes coming, but I don't know if they're going to be good or bad. I don't know if the damage is so severe now that there's anything left. Because you need people like myself to retain in the UK to bring up the next generations. And a lot of them, like, you know, like myself, I'm in Spain. And a lot of the other ones want to retire early. They're, they're sick of it. Um, but on top of that, you've got the chuff level. In the FM industry, I'll, I'll talk about my own industry, there's what I call the chuff level. The chuff level is where I find people have come in as graduates or ex-military given opportunities in the private sector. Um, they're unskilled um, at anything beyond talking. Um, and they're increasing their numbers at the top. Because if you're incompetent, what you generally do is you surround your people by other incompetent people because you offload your incompetence to them because then they are the incompetent person. And what's happened is this has happened in the FM industry. There's a huge line at the top, then it goes like that. 
right down here is the engineers and up here is sort of where I sit, which is the management and fixing things. Then you've got the senior management, which seem to create most of the issues. Um, the, the problem is they've created an industry out of nothing because this used to be what we call an engineer, engineering, this bit here. These are the people that go and fix all the buildings. These are the people that service your boilers, your lifts, your uh, generators, etc., etc. These are these guys. Then you had the layer of management, which is where I would sit. And then above that, you'd normally have your client because you don't need an FM industry at the top because it didn't exist before. There was no FM industry because it's, it's just chuff. What FM in is is basically an agency um, because... What they've done is streamlined the engineering sort of down to half of its size um, and then outsourced everything. Your generators are done by an external contractor. Your HV is done by an external contractor. Your HVAC is done by an external contractor. And they've sort of given all the work away to everybody else and they sit and make a full-time job of sitting there. Um, and I... Personally, I don't think they're the ones that are actually needed. I think they're the, they're all the problem because the FM industry is in decline um, because it's whittled away at the bottom. But now they're starting to go, well, we need more engineers. And you know what engineers are doing? Sticking their fingers up to the job opportunities. They don't want them because the wages are still 2000 because the only people that have had the wage increases is this band at the top. Um, I mean, there's a funny thing with... I was at a meeting where I was told my grade, pay grade was this, and the the wages were in line on here, and my wage was actually under what they even put on the, the board, and then I, I said to my manager, well, what's, and it's just like, oh, no, no, no just ignore that, just ignore, because as long as they're all right, they don't give a monkeys about the rest of it but it's all this bit that makes everything else work that bit at the top is the only bit that doesn't actually do anything what it does is it creates jobs out of thin air because you end up with um the people that produce stuff and then this bit at the top the bit at the top has a contracts manager it has a contracts director it has a soft services director it has a hard services director it has a health and safety manager it has an environmental team it has a um we've got the environment uh what else have you got energy saving team you've got your what else have you got the waste management all these people at the top but the funny thing is if things are managed right, instead of having about 20 people there, you could do it with four to five people. And where you've got this going on, where they keep streamlining, streamlining, and now it's to the point where they actually need some of these people to come back and they struggle because they don't want to work for these companies. Um, they offer them the salaries that these guys were getting in 2000, and they just don't take it. Um, because they're happier where they are and on top of that they're probably getting paid more where they are um, but the FM company needs the money to feed all this crap at the top so my point being in all this the people at the chuff are where the problem is um, because they don't actually generate anything and they don't generate anything in most of the industries if you look at the military the military is top heavy if you look at the House of House of Parliament, it is full of people doing nothing. The EU Parliament, full of people doing nothing. We don't need thousands of people that are just hangers on. All this thing is creating an industry at the top and filtering the money away from the bottom, filtering the money away from training, filtering the money away from development, and what you've got is people that are getting on the verge of revolt. Um, at the moment it's ticking over but we're not paying our debts because the UK is still in deficit deficit is not debt deficit is an increasing debt 
day on, day out, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's a bit like when you don't pay your mortgage and credit card and you, you've got 1,000 coming in and 1,200 going out. You never, even if you pay all the 1,000, you're still going up by 200 pounds a month in debt. That is the UK. Its debt is increasing. But these people at the top keep creating jobs out of nothing to suit themselves. And this is where the problem is. And it's throughout the UK, not just the UK, problems throughout Europe. Um, can I say globally? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I know the US has got a lot of people that sit at the top, but I'm not sure how their whole industry fits in, but it's probably similar where an MP gets lobbying for X company, then gets a quango job when he retires from being an MP, to sit there on a board of members or a non-executive board um, and gets paid for just turning up or not even turning up, just gets paid for helping with lobbying for specific things for companies. Um, it's just corruption beyond belief these days. And I think this is why it's sort of like bubbling. It's starting to bubble. The, the youth of today are going to be a bigger problem in the future when they start to realise they've got to do something about it because everybody else is just sitting there at the moment. What do you think?